September 22nd of last fall was the 30 year anniversary of me filing bankruptcy because I was stupid. 30 years ago, I went broke because I was stupid. You ever done something stupid? If you didn't raise your hand, you're stupid. Because you've all done something stupid, and I've done something stupid, and we've all... The trick is to not do the same stupid thing twice, because it hurts when you do stupid. It leaves a mark. I went broke because I borrowed too much money, and on top of that, I did it poorly. I had a lot of 90-day notes. I was doing Flip This House before there was cable TV to tell you how. And our bank got sold to another bank, and they called our notes, and we, over a two-and-a-half period, two-and-a-half-year period, lost everything we owned. When we hit bottom, we had a brand-new baby, a toddler, a marriage hanging on by a thread, and I was 28 years old. And I started studying what the scriptures say about money because I was a new Christian. And there's a lot of scriptures that talk about money, like 2,500 of them in the Bible. And I started studying old rich people. I did not want young rich people's opinion. I had been him. I was a millionaire making $250,000 a year at 25 years old in 1985 dollars. I didn't want his opinion. He thought he was hot stuff. And he wasn't. He was just a hot mess. I didn't need his opinion. So I talked to old people that had money. And I looked at the Bible and they said the same thing. Slow and steady, live on less than you make, live on a plan, and avoid debt. By the way, when we just finished this study of 10,000 millionaires, you know what they did? Slow and steady, lived on less than they make, invested steady, invested steady, and avoided debt. Your most powerful wealth-building tool is your income. And when you don't have any payments, you can build wealth. But when you give it all to car payments and student loans, Sally Mae payments, Sally Mae's got her own bedroom at your house, and you continue to use Discover Card because you're so stupid, you think points are going to make you rich. Citibank, what's in your wallet? Money. I quit borrowing money. The borrower is slave to the lender. 100% of the biblical references to debt are negative. It's not a salvation issue, and it's not a sin. It's just biblically and commonsensically stupid. Because when you don't have any payments, it's fairly easy to build wealth. So how do you get out of debt? Well, I'm a math nerd. I have all these letters and licenses after my name that says I'm supposed to know something about money. I dropped all the licenses because they tried to tell me what I could say on the radio, and I don't sell any that crap anyway. So we're out of the license business, but I've got all the letters after my name, all that stuff. It says you're supposed to know something about money. So as, a, as an official math nerd, I knew the proper way to pay off debt was highest interest rate first. Because that's mathematically correct, and everyone knows this is a math problem until I started doing coaching with people 25 years ago and started showing people how to get out of debt and showing people how not to lose their home when they're in foreclosure and how not to lose their car when they're in a repossession and how to get the credit card off their back when they're four months behind and get caught up and get paid off. I started figuring out this thing about debt reduction was more about my behavior than it was about math. The problem with your money is the guy in your mirror, the gal in your mirror. The problem with my money is the guy I shave with. He's got problems. If I can get him to behave, he can live on less than he makes and get out of debt and build wealth. But it's a behavior problem. And guess what? You don't solve a behavior problem with a math solution. You solve a behavior problem with a behavior solution. And that's when we came up with and started using the debt snowball which has been roundly and widely criticized by math nerds everywhere as not being mathematically correct, as if we didn't freaking already know that. You doofuses. Seriously. The debt snowball, the only problem with the debt snowball is it works. The paying off the highest interest rate doesn't work because people don't stick with it. When you pay off your smallest debt, you get excited and you stay with it. When you pay off your next smallest debt, you get excited and you stay with it. When you pay off your next debt, you get more excited and you cut deeper and you sacrifice more and you work harder. The more progress you make, the more excited you get. The harder you push. 
People losing weight, they lose one pound, they get excited. They lose 10 pounds, they start to get real excited. When they've lost 30 pounds, they are on fire. You can't tell them nothing. They know everything. And you know why? Because they're having an experience. And a man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an opinion. You can write a blog about Dave Ramsey and all the things that are wrong with him and post it as clickbait from your mother's basement if you want. But at the end of the day, I've gotten more people out of debt than anybody else on this planet. Because I've shown more how people how to do it, and I've taught them how to do it. And this freaking works. It's that simple. So Northwestern University in Chicago decided they were going to study the proper ways to get out of debt. The conclusion of their study was the debt snowball works because it's behavior-based. Better than any other method. People actually have a higher probability of completing the plan and of continuing on the plan and of getting more intense and actually getting out of debt faster than when they did it mathematically correct. Then Time Magazine picks up that story and says, turns out Dave Ramsey was right. After I'd already gotten 5 million people out of debt, they figured that out. Thank you for your research. It's kind of funny, actually, if you think about it. Who was it taught me to go into debt? That would be my finance professor in college that taught me the power of using OPM, other people's money, the power of leverage. Oh, Dave, I'm going to borrow money on my zero-turn lawnmower at 0% interest so that I don't have to pull my money out of my bank account at 2%. People do stupid analysis like that when they don't look at debt properly. And that's a stupid analysis. It really is. Because you're going to end up with a debt on a zero-turn freaking lawnmower. Give me a break. Seriously, you might be a redneck. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I've done so many dumb things. I can see dumb a mile away, y'all. I got a Ph.D. in D-U-M-B. So I'm not picking on you. I'm just picking on you. Because I know what works. And it's not arrogance. It's experience. Decades with millions of people experience so you list your debts smallest to largest you pay minimum payments on everything but the little one and you attack the little one with a vengeance when the smallest debt is gone you take the payments you used to pay there and you attack the next one down if you want some help doing this i'm going to set you up with a three day free email series on getting out of debt just go to daveramsey.com snowball and you can get the brand new free three-day email series on getting out of debt. DaveRamsey.com slash snowball. This is your time. This is your year. You got a whiteboard. It's time to get started. You hear all these other people doing it. When are you going to do it? DaveRamsey.com slash snowball, a free three-day email series to help you get going.